the Prague Linguistic Circle was an influential group of literary critics and linguists who found themselves together in Prague with the desire to create a new approach to linguistics. The activity of the circle was started in 1926 and it didn't completely stop even during war years, but it was severely hindered after 1948 when it was charged as being of a bourgeois character by the communist regime. The circle virtually ceased to operate in 1952. However, the circle was restored in 1990 and is still active. They developed distinctive fashion analysis of sounds and they are also renowned for their interest in the application of functionalism to syntax and the structure of literary texts. Some of the members of the Prague Linguistic Circle were Willem Mothesius, he was a professor of anglistics at the Charles University of Prague, who lived and worked in Prague during the early part of the 20th century. He founded the Prague Linguistic in 1926. Roman Jacobson, he was a Russian linguistic and literary critic. He began as a founding member of the Moscow Linguistic Circle, but then he moved to Prague, where he became a co-founder of the Prague Linguistic Circle. Nikolai Trevescoy, he was a Russian linguistic, whose teaching formed a nucleus of the Prague School of Structural Linguistics. He left Moscow because of the revolution in 1917 and moved to Vienna, where he became a distant but, but significant member of the Prague Linguistic School. And Jan Mukarovsky, he was a professor at the Charles University of Prague and he became well known for his association with early structuralism, as well as with the Prague Linguistic Circle. Before the Prague Circle, what was the knowledge that people had around linguistics? In linguistic studies prior to the founding of the Prague Circle, what was being known about linguistics was about the postulates of Ferdinand de Saussure, specifically with the book Course in General Linguistics, a heap of information on linguistics that his disciples were compiling from courses that Saussure taught. In his research, he enunciated the dichotomy lang and parole, which is considered the starting point of structuralism by conceiving language as a system of elements and rules of combination among them acceptable by the community of speakers who use it to communicate. It is also owed the definition of the linguistic sign. This is an entity with two faces. It is the union between an acoustic image, the signifier, and a concept or idea, the signified, that correspond reciprocally. The acoustic image, the signifier, is not the sound, but the mental representation of the chain of sounds that correspond to a cert certain concept. If you think of the sound of a word without pronouncing it, there is no physical sound, but there is an, an, an acoustic image. In this way, the signifier is a psychic representation because it is a memory of the sound, not the sound itself. Instead, the signified represents what is evoked in the mind. It is the mental concept, therefore abstract, because it is not the representation of a specific, a specific object, but the general characteristics of an object. What were the disciplines used in the Prague Circle? Two ways of approaching linguistics were distinctive within the Prague Circle. The first of them was a structuralism, which is mainly characterized by understanding language according to a structured system of rules that denote how language works in a particular period of time. Moreover, a structure is composed of coexisting elements that work together and relate to each other. Besides, humans can identify these constituents by differentiating them using binary oppositions. For instance, humans understand big as the opposite of little, bad as the opposite of good, etc. 
while structuralism deals with the rules of language, functionalism focuses on how elements of language achieve diverse functions. For example, the cognitive function is the mental process of transmission or acquisition of information. The expressive function indicates the behavior of the speaker. And finally, the cognitive function is the way of addressing the receiver in order to influence or provoke a particular effect on them. The Brock School made various contributions. On one hand, one of the most significant contributions of this school is the methodological principle of commutation, by which one phoneme is modified by another in a specific place in the spoken chain, producing a paradigmatic opposition and therefore a change of meaning. On the other hand, its combination of structuralism with functionalism, which contributed in the proportion of the basic principle for the creation of phonology. Likewise, it provided the binary classification of the phonological system. And you may ask, what was the importance of the circle? This circle was the most fundamental pillar for the first form of structural linguistics. In other words, this circle was the first step to a new world, to a new understanding of this topic, basically the foundation of it. The influence of this circle is huge. Everything that was discovered within this circle is something that we can still see nowadays. The people in this group were able to innovate and change the perspective that other people may have of linguistics. They were able to do it with their identification of distinctive features of language, for example, among other contributions that were special of them. Moreover, this exceptional circle was important because it gave the start to today's knowledge and studies about linguistics.